Like all Proverbs, chapter 2 is full of great, useful, and life-changing information. But when we zoom out a bit and look at its outline, the chapter reads like this. First, it tells us to ask God for wisdom. Then, it gives us a picture of the life of peace for those of us who walk out godly wisdom. Then he gives us a slightly darker picture of those who don't seek godly wisdom and how they are pulled away by their own lust and ambitions. Now before you think, well that's obvious, I already know that, let's zoom out a little bit more. Remember, these are the writings of King Solomon. Ironically, the outline of this chapter is kind of a foreshadowing of how Solomon's life would play out. As a young man, he did ask God for wisdom, and he became known as the wisest man in all the world. He lived a life of godly peace and prosperity, but toward the end of that life, we know this. Solomon married many wives who worshipped other gods, and those wives influenced him. Solomon allowed false gods to be worshipped in Israel. He let the ways of other lesser gods have a place in his kingdom. Yes, sadly, the story of Solomon is very disappointing, but we don't have to make the same mistakes. Remember that wisdom only comes from God, and we can trust his promise that if we ask God for wisdom, he will give it to us. But here's the key. This isn't something we do just once. We don't ask for wisdom and become wise forever. Seeking God's wisdom is a way of living. It's a daily prayer. Wisdom is like a fountain that flows from being in the presence of God. The moment we stop asking God for wisdom is the moment we no longer live in wisdom. We cannot separate wisdom from God. Listen to verse 6. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. 